I called them, I said, I don't want to be on the label anymore. Right. And then they said, you can't do that. The label probably already invested some money in you first and foremost. So walking away, like them letting you out of the contract is going to be hard. Artists, if you want to figure out how to get out of your deal, or at least know when to get out of this deal, I think this clip from 2 Chains is going to give you some perspective, and then we're just going to let you know, you know, what we know from our side of the industry, working with a lot of artists and navigating these deals. Check this out right here. 2 Chains is talking about when he went to Ludacris, being signed to another artist, which we, we already did a clip about that recently, and then asking him, yo, bro, I need to get out of this thing. I woke up and I said... I called him, I said, I don't want to be on the label anymore. Right. And then they said, you can't do that. Oof. Like, you can't just... just like that, it's, there's, there's no, you can't there's just, no two-way. This is a straight up. Well, you know, you just can't get off the label like that. I'm like, what you mean? I don't want to... All right, so he's about to go into this rant, basically saying, yo, they thought I was going to sign with Cash Money, so... Ludacris having DTP disturbing the peace was kind of looking at it competitively. Like, you're not about to go, like, take my market share and like to another label space. Two Chains was like, nah, I just want to be my, do my own thing. I've observed Lil Wayne's team and what you got going on. And I kind of see and peep the game of how I need to build my own thing. Great, right? Mm -hmm. Bigger point. Yo, I want to get out my deal. Nah, you can't do that. <laughs> he was like, wait, what? Of course you can't just get out the damn deal, bro. We got a deal. <laughs> <Not a contract. laughs> I'm depending on the money that I'm expecting from you or the performance that I was looking forward to you creating for my company as a whole. So how the hell can you get out the deal? Now, one, there's some petty ass situations where people are just going to hold somebody just to hold them and they give them zero way to get out the deal. All right. Mm -hmm. Or they're like, all right, bro, give me $20 million and I'll let you out. And it's like, nigga, I ain't never made 20,000. We're like, what are you talking about? How is that possible, right? So they'll make the bar unbelievably high so you can't get out the deal and basically, you know, shit on your face. Yeah. But in many other situations, there's a real worry that you can work this out. I'm going to let 2 Chains talk on his way how things worked out. Then we're going to give you guys, you know, some other things we've seen. Give me 100,000 right now, but they didn't know I had the money, right? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so I was like... Man, I go get this fucking shoebox. By the way, that's my album cover, the shoebox. Shoe box, I go yeah. get this fucking shoebox right now, cause really I had like a hundred and like eleven thousand. But I was willing to 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 yeah. like yeah. to pay right to get out. You know, but I'm not like even. I'm smart enough, but I'm not even rational enough to know that even if that was the way to do it, I couldn't just bring them a box of money and just be right. out my deal. Like right. at the time, I just wanted to be out of it and just right. like by them saying a hundred dollars, like nigga, that, like and like you know what I'm saying. Like I just just was my attitude at the time. I wanted to, wanted to just be on my own. I had a team. I had people that I felt like believed in me. Not to say that they didn't, but I just man, I've always, 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 always. All right, so they say, yo, bro, give me a hundred thousand dollars, and. You know, Chains already had $100,000. That was most of his money at the time, mm -hmm. but he had it. So expect to have to give up some type of money, period. Label probably already invested some money in you first and foremost. So walking away, like for real, like them letting you out of the contract is going to be hard. But it's not just that. Two Chains goes on to talk about he ended up having to give points to his next couple of albums, right? Points, that's basically like an equity share or a profit share of sorts, right? Um, the people who really get deep in the legalese in this industry, y'all could specify in the comments, but they, you're, you're giving points towards a project means you're gonna be able to, you know, um, get, some get some of the percentage, right? Whatever those points are, right? So you can think of it almost like, almost like shares. That's for his next few projects. So yeah, one year gone, you had to pay a deposit, to get out <laughs> and then two you got to keep paying me with your future work because you're going to keep you're going to go out there in the marketplace i'm you're leaving so you can go do it on your own i still need that because if you grow i did put some investment into you that was counting on you to grow and reap from that growth mm -hmm. why the hell am i gonna put money in you and then not get any of the upside and that's most of these people's arguments when uh, artists try to get out of deal early mm -hmm. or because they're like yo man i'm popping now and you know like I'm the one who created all this. And it's like, uh, yeah, people love you because you are you. However, I made you look like you because I dressed your ass up. All right. I made you sound like you because I added some high. I, I connect you with, with some better producers. You know what I mean? You got the talent. Great. That's why I got you on this team. 
or why I, why I like wanted to invest in you. Not got you understand. I wanted to invest in you. That is a fact. So for a large part, they are coming to and are attracted to you. But let's not act like I didn't put any investment in. And I just want to be appreciated for that part. Yeah, and even at that point, it's like I also might be the reason that you were seeing at the scale that you were seeing that started launching you to the point where you felt like this. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Like I, I kind of laid that foundation. So, I mean, I, I do like when labels have the buyout clause. Like I've seen it in different ways, right? Like mm -hmm. you mentioned the point system. Um, I've seen a way where they'll kind of calculate like what they expected the future value of it to be and if you can pay that, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I've, I've seen a couple different ways and I do think a buyout clause is very fair. Hey, if you're enjoying this clip, let's take a quick second and be real with each other. We both know that most people don't want to put the sauce out there. However, we're trying to get out as much of it for free and to do that, we need to have as many subscribers so we can be an attractive platform where people want to come and get a game. So if you want more content like this, if you want to support the No Labels Necessary movement, all you have to do is subscribe right now. It's like, hey, if you really want all this yeah. deal, pay me, you can get out. Because all, all those things you said. You know what I'm yeah, that's something you can think of ahead of time, mm -hmm. right? Because you want that creates an easy way for you to get out. You can now plan for it. You know what it looks like to get out before you even get in. And now you just got to execute versus now I got to try to work some shit out and we might be in, in a bad blood space mm -hmm. or somebody can have an opportunity to be petty. So if you have the the you know uh pool. the pool the yeah. leverage to do a buyout clause <laughs> ahead of time go ahead and shoot that shot for real and there were there are a lot of people who would go for something like that and of course then you're gonna have to ne negotiate what that buyout clause looks like that's another story but like, all these things can be accounted for ahead of time and i think what's so important about this story is it was an artist signing an artist mm -hmm. somebody people will respect as an artist all right, signing another artist and then that artist still had the exact same type of issues mm -hmm. with that artist as artists have with labels mm -hmm. something's common here it's just the business of the music how that shit adds up is hard for artists to be satisfied within it because the business it's a hard business to profit from so it creates hard lines within contracts yeah bro right? i have this i have this theory man i personally think any artist should be weary was signing to any artist that was popping in the 90s and 2000s because they were living a different music industry experience and they were they were brought up in that music industry experience you know what i'm saying yeah. so they're like I'd, it doesn't surprise me that Ludacris is a product of that thinking because that's how the executives were moving when he was a young yeah. rising artist you know what i'm saying so i, I personally that's just how the business go yeah, yeah exactly and it's like well they did it to me and it worked out so you know i didn't think it was bad to do it even yeah. two chains in a way is representative of i mean he's an older generation now but at the time he was representative of a newer generation of artists coming in right and so that whole dichotomy of old generation artists bringing up new generation artists under the system that they were made for while the new generation artists is seeing like nah there's a new like approach yeah kind of coming that i can take advantage of and i don't really want to do that and it's like i i don't think either side is really right or wrong you know i mean i guess i guess i guess if you were trained in the finesse and you still carry the ways of the finesse i guess there is some wrong in that but i at least <laughs> understand it you know what i'm saying um but yeah, but that's just what I think. Any artist that was popping in two thousand in the nineties, man, don't, don't sign them. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I can see that. I can see that. You know, but you know, then signing to new artists, are they really ready? Yeah, that's you know true. what I mean. So, the experience, hey, these connections, yeah. If possible, don't sign to an artist. <laughs> <laughs> there's some rare situations. I was, I read say there's some rare situations where it might work out, but both situations don't sign to an artist. Yeah, that's my thoughts for real. <laughs> that is wild, bro. They're going to violate you or they don't know what to do with you. That's a crazy. Hey. It's a crazy uh, set of choices. Bro, because record label record deals are already hard enough in, in themselves. Yeah. You add that extra business on top of that shit of an artist having to do that. Like I don't I, I don't know how to run a record label. No, I could know how to run a record label, but I also I'm trying to be successful as an artist. Those are two things that are very difficult to manage. And now I want to throw somebody else on my plate. Nah, fuck that. Fuck yeah. that. So that's another quick clip. We would love to know you guys' thoughts on this clip and whether or not y'all want to see us do some more quick clips like this other than that.